This is Balos Beach. It's the place you cannot miss if you're visiting Greece. This place is really unique. From the color of the water, the beauty of the nature, the rugged cliffs, the hike along the way, everything you can see here is truly breathtaking. If you're visiting Crete, there's no question, you have to come to see this place. It's absolutely fantastic. It's, it's something you don't see everywhere. It's a unique place. Today we're visiting Balos one of the best beaches in Crete and listed as one of the best beaches in the world, actually. One of the wonders of Greece. There are a few ways to get to Balos, including a ferry, you can come by car, you can rent a private boat or you can take a hike. Yeah, we decided to go for the car option. The car one will be a little bit more adventure than the other ones and that's mostly because of the road. The road is good until one point but there is about seven kilometers of rocky road which is not that great this part of the road is considered to be dangerous by many people um, if you google it you might find articles about it about being a dangerous road yeah we did it before and we don't think it's very dangerous really we think you can do it with any type of car even with the small cars i saw some reviews saying that you need a 4x4 for this one an but suv we disagree. <laughs> There's no need for that. You, j you just need to, to go maybe slowly. Be extra careful and I think it's doable with any type of car. Yes, obviously you can do it with a small car. Yeah, or... most of the rental companies don't cover this road. They would say it's an off-road and it's not covered in case anything happens. You're on your own. So uh, you might pay for that. You just have to check your insurance, ask before. Calimera. So there is a one euro per person charge. Here the real struggle begins. Now, if you look to reviews on Lost Beach, a lot of people are complaining about this road, but has been the same for the last forever. <laughs> and uh, it's understandable. If you have no experience, it will be a shock. Maybe if you have a rented car and you pay the deposit and any scratch can count, then uh, you will be a bit stressed. So take that into consideration. I remember two years ago when we did this, we have a rent, uh, rented car. I was going very fast. So when you go very fast, you don't feel the bumps that hard, but it's a bit dangerous. So uh, don't do that. Now it's our own car. So I will go slowly. Another good tip is, don't go behind someone else's car because all the dust will come on your car. Look at this magnificent landscape. I mean, the road is a bit bumpy, but check out these views. It's totally worth it. Welcome to Balos. <laughs> and look at these views. It goes all the way around this cliffside. The road will be a shock for a lot of people that uh, didn't read a lot of information about this uh, beach. This rock claimed many tires and axles. So pay attention when the boulders are sticking out a bit more and uh, just try to go around them. What are you doing in the middle of the road? You have no sense of safety. Where are you running about? There's a goat marathon these days. I don't know, must be some uh, goat celebration. Can you give me some space. They are not bothered. No. Just to. So what are you doing in our territory? We knew that there will be goats, so we brought presents. Amalia <laughs> brought presents for goats. Hello, beautiful goats. How are you today? Come on. Just don't hit us. I think they are scared. Yeah, they are scared. <laughs> Come on, man. They are sleeping in the middle of the road. That's understandable. They are like, you are in our house now. We are the bodyguards of this place. You're here because we allow you to be. Yeah, you just stare at me like that, human. The 
the view along the way is absolutely stunning. You can't see much of the views. <laughs> if I'm looking too much at the views, we will become part of the view. So we don't want that to happen. <laughs> but this is half an hour of pure wonder. This is the parking. How much? Three. Mm. Oh, I have you don't have money? <laughs> so it's three euros for the parking. You can't park where you want to, somebody will guide you. Uh, Ella Fonisi? <laughs> Palos, my friend, oggi la Fonisi, eh? Palos, yeah. So here at the parking they have a small kiosk. Uh, let's see what they sell. You have to come back by 8. It took us about 30 minutes to get to the parking. You will go with 10, 20 kilometers per hour, second gear. There will be good parts, bad parts. When you reach here, there is a parking, somebody will guide you. And uh, here is where the real hike starts. If you want to get a spot in the parking lot... You should arrive before 9. If you come in the weekend, maybe earlier. Arriving early is key here to find the parking place, especially in the parking area. This is the, I think, the most visited spot in Crete, so obviously it gets busy. It's 9 o'clock now and there was plenty of space in the parking still. This is a Monday, it's end of June as well. So yeah, probably July and August are even busier. So the sooner you arrive, the better. This is the first viewpoint. <laughs> Stunning. It's already a mirage. People start to come. Ah. For this hike, yeah, it's better to have proper shoes. I think you can manage to do it even in flip-flops, although it's not advisable and I, I think, wouldn't suggest it. Yeah, two years ago we did it in flip-flops. Yeah, so you can do it, but it's just much more comfortable to wear proper shoes. Even now, for example, I'm not completely ready. It's more challenging to yeah. do it in flip-flops, so wear proper shoes because the terrain is rough. You will hurt your feet. This is the point where the stairs start. It's about 850 stairs. 850 stairs, like 15 minutes of stairs. Yeah. Can't wait, can't <laughs> wait. There are people who go till the middle of the hike and then realize it's not for them and they're coming back. So it's better to be well informed about this one. Otherwise, there will be a lot of surprises. This one right here is one of the most popular spots. Here everybody stops to take pictures and all the photos you can see on the internet, they're all taken from here. This is the best viewpoint yeah. of Balos. Be careful, please. It's not like, this is not the normal path. As that one is, but obviously we're feeling adventurous. Just take some clean shots. Now another viewpoint because this one is very popular. Very it's, busy. It's getting busy, so you it's very hard to have a clean shot. Eat. You go over there. Yeah just over there now we're trying to reach the other viewpoint it's not as bad as it seems but the sun is a real problem make sure to bring the hat sunscreen there's there's no way you can go anywhere in greece in the summer without sunscreen no way don't do that mistake or maybe do it once <laughs> just to learn a lesson so look at this viewpoint no words can describe this place. It's truly incredible. It's truly a wonder. I mean, we say this all the time. I mean, Crete is truly a wonder. Greece is truly a wonder. So I'm trying to reach the highest point of Valor. You 
might find Balos listed as the best beach in Greece. I think we can agree on that one. <laughs> in my opinion, this is the best beach in Crete and it might be in Greece as well. It's one of the best in Greece, definitely. It's one I mean, of the top attractions here in Crete. It's one of the top places to visit in Crete. Maybe it's hard to reach because uh, of the road and of the hike. You cannot come in Crete and don't visit Balos. But you need to take a few things in consideration because it's not for elderly people or... It depends, I would say it can be. It can be, but it will be a bit challenging. It might be a bit challenging for elderly people, young children, and also if you're not in good health, you might struggle a bit. Especially if you come out of season, I don't think it's something unreachable. No, it's not, it's not. But it's, it's challenging, it's just it's challenging. But it's totally worth it. I mean, look at this. Look at this view. So this is a protected site. The whole area is protected by European environmental programs, so that's why I think this place still has its charm. And uh, I think that's why the road is the way it is. I don't think they're allowed to change anything about this area. Yeah, because so. it's protected, nothing is allowed to be changed. In order to keep this place like this? Yeah, you need to, to put a few laws and you need to protect it. Otherwise, there will be villas around and roads and everything. Yeah, so that's why you can't find many facilities here, shops, there's no roads or anything like that. So it's not easy reachable. This is because it's protected and there are strict rules about it. There are some see. rare species you can spot here, like the loggerhead turtle and the monk seal. I think if you're lucky, maybe in some periods of the year you can spot them if you're trying snorkeling. Another thing to mention is that this place is usually quite windy, so I think it's important to know this. Check the weather before coming here, especially if you're here for a week or more days. Maybe you can choose the best one to come here. I think your experience can be completely different. If you're visiting Crete, there's no question, you have to come to see this place. Yes. I mean, look at it. From the color of the water, the emerald shades of the water, it's absolutely fantastic. It's, it's something you don't see everywhere and it's a unique place. So this enclosed area with the sand is the lagoon. So this is where the name comes from, the lagoon. The Balos, Balos Lagoon, Balos lagoon yeah. is because of this lagoon forming right here. Yeah, and this is the Balos Beach where the sand meets the sea. You can see the island uh, Gran Vusa with the fortress there and on that side is where the ferries will come with people. This is one of the most photographed places here in Greece. It has the most reviews on TripAdvisor and on Google Maps. Yeah, so it's one of the most visited spots. Come on Amalia. Where is your goat training at? Hello. Hello. Speak English? Is this, you're selling here or is... No. <laughs> Uh, the stairs are not that bad. Yeah, we read some reviews about the stairs. About the hike in general, there were a few people complaining about it, that it's very hard to do. It's not that difficult. It's not that difficult, but yeah, it's not yeah, an easy way down by any means, but it's not as hard as some people make it look like. Yeah. If you go slowly, if you pay attention, if you have proper shoes, then it's fine bring some water with you also. There's not much shade on the way, so again, arriving early is key. Uh, arriving early at any destination in Greece in the middle of the season. Specifically the popular ones. Yeah, is key. Obviously we are bending the, the normality of the things. No, but it's much easier to walk on this because the surface is more flat. Look at these rocky ones. For me in sandals it's not that easy. It's yeah. easier to walk on these ones. For us it's... It's easier to walk on the, whatever this is, alternative uh, stairs. Charipava, charipava, sha, sha, na, sha, 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 na, na, sha, na, na. Okay, go, go down from this one. Bye! <laughs> the review point, Amalia, look. You can call a viewpoint any point along the way here. Yeah, and it's a shady spot. Amalia, let's have a second here. Just a second in the shade. There's not much on the way, so we have to make them make them count. Let's let's go. Let's go because these people will take all the good spots. So Amalia, from what I can see here. 
You're not allowed to camp here. You can't stay overnight. <laughs> it's ruined your plans. Yeah. Is it? No umbrellas allowed. Yeah, you're oh. not allowed to bring your own umbrella. That's I can see a lot of umbrellas. Yeah, a lot of people bringing umbrellas. You can't make a barbecue here. No wood or plant cutting or destroying, obviously. No unsolicited interface, like scent sampling. Yeah, especially mm, the pink scent. Don't <laughs> throw rubbish. Yeah. I think it's common sense. I've just built you a shelter. <laughs> so please, have some shade here. From the bottom of my heart. How is it? Nice. It's good to live in. I don't like this though. Smoking and also throwing rubbish. Yeah, I don't like that. Yeah, this is a protected place. If you come here and do this, what kind of person are you? <laughs> yeah, just uh, be respectful to this area and to the nature. If you come here, don't throw rubbish and don't. Yeah. I think it's not to be. Do big. things that are not allowed. Don't do this anywhere, really. Almost there. Here is where the sand starts. Just about to reach the beach. Maybe so all this area here, the water is very, very shallow, and I think it's much warmer as well. We sh we shall see if it's much warmer. But it's a good. I think it's a good area for kids here. Yeah, in the lagoon, it's a good area for kids. This place has a really exotic feel with the white sand and the clear, crystal clear blue waters. Looks like a place from. Looks like Maldives. It's like an exotic tropical place. Yeah, look at this sand. It's so white. Oh, even though this area is already with sand, you still have to keep your shoes on because there's many rocks in between, many pebbles. It's not really comfortable to walk without your shoes. I think uh, if you need shade, you should uh, look for a big boulder to go behind it. The hike was not that bad actually. It took us maybe 20 30 minutes to do, and it's not very difficult. If you hurry, you can do it in 15 minutes. If you stay to take pictures, it will take half an hour, maybe yeah. more. It's not that hard to do. So. And it's a really enjoyable hike. I mean, the views, the landscape is absolutely stunning. So you just yeah. have to stop a bit and take it in. It's not a dangerous one. It's not uh, like I'd say Tanlimania, where you are tense all the time and stressed yeah. because you might uh, put, your, put your feet on the wrong uh, cliff and fall. It's just more like a relaxing one. Like yeah, I think the worst part is that it's a bit uneven, so it's a bit difficult to walk, you have to pay attention when you make a step. But other than that, it's, it's not that hard to do. And there are like two shady points along the way where you can stop and catch your breath. Like here, it starts to be rocky, because until here I was sandy, but now you can see it. it's rocky. And it's the same in the water. You have to keep your shoes on. There's a... I don't know what that is. They it's might... like a kiosk, like a small place to sell maybe water, a few snacks. We're gonna check it out and show you what it's all about. Yeah, let's see some prices. So from what I can see, they sell snacks, soft drinks, ice cream, coffee. So it's not a taverna, they, you can't find food here. But you can find a few sandwiches, look, even pizza. How much is the water? 150 euros for 750 milliliters. Yeah. It is not open yet. Hello. Hello. For the price. Oh, I think yeah. you... umbrella. You're not working here? No. No. No, I think it's not open yet. You can buy things like um, crisps and stuff like this for three, five euros. There is pizza for 650, focaccia 650, sandwiches 450. Also, basic drinks like a coffee goes anywhere from 250 to 4. Fresh orange juice 6 euros, water is 150. Soft drinks like Coca Cola, Sprite 350. <laughs> There's also a changing room here, I think there's only one, the first one is This is the only place where we can find umbrellas. So yeah, if you're looking to get one, you have to come here very early. So there are 43, I've counted them, 43 umbrellas. <laughs> when did you count them? <laughs> Just like a cake and it's 40, 43. <laughs> 43 umbrellas and uh, maybe double of seats. So uh, yeah. 82, something like that. We are searching for some shade. And also want to check out this place. Want to I check out. These are the toilets. Oh, these are the toilets. These are the toilets. 
the lays. They don't look that bad. I'm gonna go to see. Take the camera. Just gonna check it out quickly. Hey, it's early in the morning. It still doesn't smell like anything. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Basic stuff. I think if you have showers and you have a safeguard, it's a blue no, it's flag. No, it's not this one. It's not a blue flag. No. Look. Perfect Look, shade spot. I found right it. behind the toilet. It can't get any better. I think this, this is where Raul wants us to stay. Look at this beautiful place. There's so many options. Where do you think Raul wants to stay? Here, behind the, behind the toilet. <laughs> no, I don't want to stay near the Come toilet. on, let's go this way. Maya, I just need Stop to... being silly. I'm not gonna sit here next to the toilet. Okay. Let's go another 20 minutes. This island, I don't know the name of it, but do you see the resemblance with the yacht? You see it? No. No, it's just my imagination. Looks like a yacht. It is called oh, a yacht. Kind of. So this is how many people are at 11.30. Situation at 4 o'clock. There are still people coming obviously and the ferries are not here yet, have not arrived. We'll see how many people are later. So there are a few ways to come here to get to Balos. One of them is obviously by car as we did. Another option is to come with a ferry. Another option would be to rent a boat. Or there is also a hike that you can do, it's a few hours hike. If you like hikes, I think it's a good option, depending on the weather. If it's out of season, I think it's a better... Yeah, each one has its advantages. Each one of them has its own experience, it's an adventure in itself. So whatever you choose, uh, I think you will have a great time and you will love it here. There are a few options. If you want to come by car, you can come with your rented car, with your own car, or you can... There are uh, day trips organized. So maybe you can just get a bus from Hania or wherever you are. Or you can or... hire a taxi if if you yeah. have that kind of money or and you're not bothered. It, it will be pretty hire expensive. Hire a private transfer. Yeah. Or uh, like hire a boat. Also, yeah, that will be hundred, pretty expensive. A few hundred euros if you come here by uh, um, using a private boat. But the most popular ones are with a car and with a ferry. The ferry, you will have to take it from the port of Kisamos and it will uh, be around 30 euro per person. Yeah, I think it's closer to 40 now for adults and around 20 to... And I think it might change years. depending on the season. Uh, if you come with ferry, you will also visit Granvosa, which is that island that has a Venetian fortress. And also shipwreck. And also an amazing beach. Yeah. Coming by ferry, it's a, it's has, a day trip in itself. It yeah. has a few stops along the way. You get to see the port of Kisamos, then the first stop is Gambus Island. You spend roughly an hour, an hour and a half there. And then you would come to Balos, where you also spend roughly two hours, let's say. Yeah, getting here by ferry takes, I think, about half an hour to get to the first point, and then maybe another half an hour to, to reach Balos. This is the part where the boats anchor. Yeah. Yeah. Good one. Yeah. yeah. Hey. Let's keep it to Raul, a new word. <laughs> a lot of boats here. This is the actual Balos beach. This one. Uh, although it's a rocky beach, it's not even pebbles, it's a rock. This is. Yeah, having water shoes rock. is the best option here. Yeah, this is. It's really convenient to walk along the shores and also I think you can even do the hike in these kind of shoes. The color of the water, this light turquoise shade, it's something, it's amazing. It's something that uh, dreams are made of. <laughs> I named that one. <laughs> and so we saw two paddle boats. I don't know how they ended up here. Maybe they came with some boats, but you can't find paddle boats here for rent. It's a pretty remote location. There's not many facilities or amenities here. Um, they try to preserve it as much as they can, so it's understandable. And I think it gives you a better experience. More natural feel. Look at that uh, uh, cliff in the going in the yeah, in, in the, the clouds. clouds. Stunning. Okay. But the, the, 
the water here it just has a crazy shade, a crazy hue color, or shade. Hue, yeah. Yeah, hue of turquoise. It's amazing. Yeah, it's warmish. Okay, it's not easy to walk on, but look at this blue baby. <laughs> blue baby. Blue baby. I think once you get to that part, it oh, it stands all over. You think? Yeah. How is it, Amalia? Is it sand? Yes. You can spot some pink sand as well. Yeah, some this pink, pink sand. This pink sand is coming from the crushed shells of the microorganism living in the water. But just so you know, it's not pink sand. It has a pink hue. Yeah. It's not like on Instagram or on Pinterest. It's not a pink it's pink. Not pink, pink. It's just a pinkish color. Yeah, but look, there is a lot here. Yeah, especially if I put a bit of edit on that. The bees that are pink are really, really bright pink. Yeah. So it's important not to just leave it there. Don't take the, it home. With the increased tourism, the pink sand is decreasing and it's a shame. So yeah, let's try to preserve it as much as we can. The water here though is perfect. So at, perfect the, beginning, at the beginning there are rocks, but then yeah. it's sand. It's quite hard to get in there, but yeah, after after the rocky part, it is uh, just sand. So here's the part with the umbrellas. Yeah, there's a uh, small sand. sand here. Yeah. It's full. Like two lines of umbrellas. It's sound like this each, yeah. I read in the reviews that you pay 20 euros for the set. Look at this color. Now, if you come here and you don't want to rent an umbrella, I think the best place here is the best place to stay. You got a breeze that will pull you down. It is not too windy. Yeah, it's basically just where the umbrella ends, that part. And it's the best spot to go into the water as well. The water is very, the water is quite shallow and it's not very wavy. Also, it's quite easy to go into the water. It's more sand. The other parts are more rocky. Yeah, so this is a nice white sand here. Ow. <laughs> so in order to reach the other side we have to go through the water. Are you ready Amalia? Yeah. It's gonna be a bit deep. Not here, your phone is safe. Yeah, please don't drop my phone. I hope we don't need to swim. Ay -ya. Ay -ay 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 -ay. Why don't you come behind me? It's easy to pass. It's so this part here is more rocky. The water in the lagoon here is really, really shallow. It doesn't go above the knees. Let's check out this area. Here is the lagoon. Yeah, this area here is really shallow. It's not even up it's to the knees. Yeah, it's really warm and there are no waves. So it's perfect for small kids. And it's very nice. It's a nice feel to walk in the water like this. It's really warm. So here, at the edge of the lagoon, there's a natural pool. Look how nice it is. And it's a bit deep. I mean, and the water is warm. It's like a soup. <laughs> <laughs> I think it has like... It's deep, look. Yeah, it's deep. I think it has 30 degrees. Let me check that out. <laughs> nah. Nah? Yeah, what it's cold? It's not 30 degrees. No? It's not cold. Look at the difference in color. Yeah. That side which is deeper and this side which is shallow and warm. I think it's a bit dangerous there. So I should go. The rocks are so sharp. Yeah, the rocks here are very, very sharp. It's so deep already, you can't reach the bottom. And there are also a bit of waves. So it's not that easy to walk. Oh, look, there are some fish here. Yeah, this is a nice place for snorkeling. I will, I will take the camera later to go in the water with it. But the water though, the color yeah, we is can, amazing. Yeah, we can have a bath. 
cool down a bit, yeah? Yeah. The, the right side of the ballos, the right beach, it's easier to swim. There is more sand on the bottom, calmer water. And there's not so many waves like on the other side. Yeah, many boats are anchored here. But on the left beach, it's more like a wild one with some uh, waves. It's better for snorkeling, I think. You can get the better snorkel there, but... Um, you have to jump in the water straight away because the rocks are very sharp. Yeah, the rocks are very sharp. It's actually, I cut my hand, but just a bit. So depending on uh, what you want to do, if you want to snorkel, you should go to the left beach. If you want just to relax, you should go to the right one and swim. And if you have kids or you just want to go through a really shallow warm water, go into the lagoon, lagoon, something for everyone. everyone. If you want to explore this big island, I think you can find a lot of quiet spots. We will explore a bit uh, this big island around it to see some beaches because we didn't see many videos presenting this part, more like a hidden part. So we just want to explore and see what's out there on our private beach. And look at this. It's, it's a bit dirty, but it's just for us. But this area I wanted to say is so nice to walk on because it's not very sharp so it's quite enjoyable actually, it's yeah, sandy it's, for the most part It's and then, sandy then it's rocky yeah. or it's with uh, it's interesting. bushes But look how this is nobody here Like you can have all this beach for yourself if you come here So we just found the nudist beach But it's nobody here <laughs> Oh, look at this! How cute it is! This little bay here! So mm. cute! It's like your own private natural pool. We can see the ferry parked on Gambus Island. <laughs> Keep going, let's see what, what else we can find here. Conquer these unexplored areas. I think our exploration is coming to an end. We reached this far. It's really nice, but... Yeah, with the water shoes, it's not that comfortable to walk on these sharp rocks. In the wild. It's about two o'clock now, and this is the first ferry coming. This is huge. Yeah. How many people do you think there are here on the ferry? A lot. 1,000? They're gonna fill up the island quickly. We try to swim over here and it's not that easy, it's not what it seems like because there is quite a bit of swimming involved in this one and if you come with a lot of backpacks and things like that it's not gonna be easy because there are waves and the rocks here on the bottom are really sharp. So we've been in the water. It's hard even to stand or to walk because it's very slippery, the rocks are very sharp and it's just uneven, it's not sand on the no, bottom. It's it's quite dangerous. I'm very curious how the people would get down from the ferry. I'm wondering if these people were informed about this situation, if they know. And I was filming the mountain. There are people jumping. See people struggling. You can see a lot without water shoes. And I saw some dropping their backpacks in the water and carrying the young ones on their shoulders. Yeah, I think if you know what to expect, if you know this is coming, then it's fine, it's part of the adventure. But if you don't expect it and you're not prepared for it and you're coming with young children, small children, babies, I think this, this can be difficult. Now people are struggling a bit and it's a huge tail, a huge queue for them to wait. I think the easiest way to go about this is to swim really. I think it's the safest one. So if you can, Maybe pack very light, maybe put your things in a waterproof bag or something and just swim, I think is the best option. Or just don't carry too many things. From what we read online, there is a new law. They are not allowed to disembark any closer to the shore than this. This is part of the preservation of the nature. Yeah, so they, need to they want to protect the area as much as they can, so that's why they have this new law. 
I don't know how these ferry businesses go about it. I'm not sure how well these people were informed. They might be, but I think it's useful to know. It's something that you should know prior to booking your tickets. Be prepared, yeah. I think it's not such a big deal. It's not as a long big as deal. you have the proper shoes, you expect this to happen and you know uh, yeah. A few things about yeah. swimming. So you know what to pack because maybe you can leave at home some of the things. For yeah, example, I can't see someone carrying a drone or something very expensive here because it's really dangerous. You can drop it in the water at any time. Yeah, but it's part of the experience. Yeah. I think there it's... are people laughing, there are people having fun, there are people that are annoyed. So it's I yeah, think... there are there are some angry people. I saw some yeah. angry people. It definitely slows down the disembarking and it takes longer. Imagine how long it takes for all these people to get off the boat and to to go back on the boat and I think you have uh, two hours to spend here in total so if you know this prior it's good to be quick maybe you're, uh, you can get in the front and just be one of the first one that's going down because it's gonna it's a lot of waiting I can see a lot of people waiting there in yeah, well, I can see while. some elderly people struggling some people falling I can see some angry people filming alongside us and obviously if you are at the end of the line you will have to wait a lot of time i mean one hour to wait just to disembark and struggle look how full it is and it's there are still people up that are waiting so this will take at least one hour it is what it is this is the law it's not much yeah, you can do about it i think it's good for the nature maybe this will change things a bit and it will help preserving the place better but yeah being informed is definitely gonna change your experience, experience. Yeah. This is taking really long and I think people are starting to get annoyed because I can hear people yelling. Someone said they have two hours here. If it takes one hour to disembark and one hour to embark then yeah I guess there's not much time left to enjoy the place anymore. This is the situation after the ferry. It's way busier and uh, people are everywhere so from two o'clock it's getting busier <laughs> they are so cute so cute i lost you for one second then what are you doing you found two children? You found something to adopt? <laughs> now this is the situation going back uphill. Going strong. <laughs> uh, it's way harder uphill. Yeah. It will take us one hour. But it's okay, it's part of the journey. We <laughs> have to enjoy it. Okay. The worst part is the sun is very, very strong. So if you have a head, better and put sunscreen i don't understand how people can still not use it i mean we saw we saw, we saw a few people few burnt ones and it's just purple it's ones crazy to me now whenever you're tired just stop along the way yeah don't force yourself like have a few breaks along the way have some water have some water you can have there's not much shade on the way so i think it's really really important to either have an umbrella or something on your head on the way back on the way back especially in the midday yeah and and if you stayed all day in the sun, then this might be the cherry on the top. <laughs> I think there are a few important takeaways from this video. The most important thing is that you have to visit Palos. It's a great place. It's one of the best places to visit for a reason and it's totally worth it. I think there are a few things to consider though and it's important to know all the, all the information before. Yeah, just choose the best way for you. Once you know all the information, you can choose whatever is best for you. I think there are some pros and cons to each side. For example, for us, I think the most suitable way is by car by far. And I think it's the best way to visit Balos. In my opinion, regardless of the ferry situation, it's still the best way to, to travel to Balos because otherwise you're just missing part, the, best the best part. part yeah, you're missing all the viewpoints. You're missing the height itself. It's an experience and it's amazing. It's not that hard to do. And you get to see this beautiful place from the top. You can take some nice pictures, enjoy the view, do the hike at your own pace. You can come and leave at any hour. You have more time to properly discover the place and to enjoy it. 
But also, keep in mind if you go with the ferry, there are other pros like you will see Gran Busa, yeah, you will see the island. Yeah, coming island. by ferry is the only way to, to see Gran Busa. Yeah, you will, have, you will have another view because probably the view from the ferry is also nice. Yeah, you get to and see the islands in a different way. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a more relaxing trip. You don't have to worry about driving, you don't have to worry about doing the hike, parking and stuff like that. So maybe it's more suitable to come with a ferry for you and it's just a nice experience as well as long as you have all the information. Yeah, I think a downside to the ferry, not having enough time to enjoy the place and also it's very crowded because the ferry is like a few hundred people that are coming and it, embarking all at the same time you only have like two hours to spend on the island and now with the new law this embarking and embarking takes most of it and if you come by car obviously you get these early morning hours when it's yeah. nobody here yeah no, not nobody but it's much much less people here and you can really enjoy the place doesn't matter how you choose to come here just, just come here just come here <laughs> okay if you come by car you have more time to spend here come by ferry, you see Grabusa as well, so it's up to you which one is better. If you rent a private boat, this means you have money. Yeah, so... <laughs> it's also good. It's a great option, a great experience, I'm sure. And if you have money for a private boat, it's the best option. It depends. I would still go with the car. I think it's the best experience here at Valos. To go with the car, to the hike. The hike is part of it and I wouldn't miss it. I wouldn't skip it. I think that's kind of it. This sums up everything. Hope you enjoyed this one. See you in the next one. And stay safe. Is a beach and a lagoon as well. At least that's what we think. Very important information, Raoul. So, yeah, in it's... my opinion, this is the best beach in Greece. In Greece. <laughs> <laughs> Especially in the parking area. Ooh. This is Ballos, Ballos Beach. beach. <laughs> I'm sorry. You will hurt your shoes. Your... <laughs> you will hurt your shoes. <laughs> Oh, these are the toilets. These are the toilets. There's two toilets. There are two toilets. I'm very curious what is on this island, but I don't, I don't think we will have time to check it out. Very important information. Yeah, very important. <laughs> very important thing. <laughs>